Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IS. Today we will have the Hindu newspaper analysis dated 15th of October 2022. So let us quickly look into those topics that we are going to take for discussion today. So these are the important articles that I have listed for discussion for the day. Uh, the first article is related to electoral bonds and recently the Supreme Court of India has asked the central government whether electoral bonds like whether you know uh, like electoral bonds reveal the source of funds. So we are going to discuss about what is electoral bond. We are going to understand various nuances associated with the electoral bonds and at the same time we are going to talk about the recent happenings related to electoral bonds. So this topic is connected with Indian economy and since the Supreme Court of India is looking into the matter so the, uh, that's why it becomes important under Indian polity also. Okay, so the second topic that we are going to discuss is no time for placebo. So when we talk about placebo, right, placebo is a terminology. It means usage of fake drugs, means like, you know, uh, sometimes we are given tablets, but like many a times those tablets do not have any therapeutic value. I mean, like, you know, simply something is uh, made in the shape of tablet, but actually it does not have, you know, those uh, ph uh, pharmaceutical ingredients. So the thing is these things are known as placebo. So we are going to understand about like, like why we do not have time for placebo. Okay, so this particular article, you know, takes us to one of the most important findings of the World Health Organization related to the Gambia. Okay, and uh, Gambia means like, you know, some incident recently happened there and 66 kids, children have died there. So we will understand about various things associated with, the, with this article. So this article is related to the health sector of Indian economy. So it becomes important under GS paper 3. Okay, we will talk about the regulatory bodies related to, you know, medicine and healthcare se uh, sector. Then the third topic is about smash hit. What do we mean by smash hit? Basically, this article talks about science and technological thing. So we will understand about, uh, you know, few specific asteroids, okay. So you might be knowing that asteroids are planetary, uh, you know, like planetary bodies. So they orbit around the sun. But the thing is their size is very small as compared to any other planet, okay. So these are considered to be small planet. They do not have their atmosphere, okay. So recently, like it was noticed that like, you know, some asteroids are, you know, moving towards the earth and NASA right nasa has conducted a test okay uh, we will talk about that test the short form of the test is d a r t double asteroid redirection test okay so we will discuss about this particular test we will understand about what are asteroids so this topic is important under science and technology section for gs paper 3 of the mains exam okay it is also important for the prelims exam because upsc has asked in previous year like what is asteroid what is the nature of asteroids where they are found etc so we will understand about that thing then apart from this the fourth topic is global hunger index okay so recently the global hunger index report has come out and it has ranked india under severe category okay under serious category and india has been ranked at 107 rank so in this article we will talk about the organization that releases the world health uh, world you know hung, uh, global hunger, hunger index and we will talk about you know various sub components like you know what are components of the global hunger index and how india india's rank fares as compared to you know many other countries including african countries okay so we will talk about all of that so this topic is important for the prelims exam okay prelims exam it is also important for the gs3 of the mains exam so we are going to discuss about the uh, this particular topic under report and indices category okay report and indices category after this we are going to look into another topic it says india's policies must aid in bright spot forecast so this is an article, this article is linked with the International Monetary Fund. So recently International Monetary Fund has, you know, given some forecasts related to growth prospects of various economies around the world. And it has also talked about how India can grow in the near future. Okay, so it has shown optimism when it comes to India. 
So India was recently forecasted that India is going to grow at 6.1%. But the thing is like, you know, there are various nuances associated with this. So in this article, we are going to discuss about that particular issue. So this article is important under Indian economy. Okay, this is important for the GS paper 3 of the mains exam. Then next topic, it says risky to lift repo rate above neutral when growth fragile. Okay, so in this article, we will discuss about what is repo rate, what is the role of repo rate and we will discuss about the monetary policy committee right recently monetary policy committee one of the member of the monetary policy committee has revealed some information related to i mean move of the reserve bank of india related to repo rate okay so like here we are going to understand about like how repo rate can affect the growth of an economy you know as huge as india so this article is also important under indian economy section then the next topic is eco sensitive zone top court may take up kerala's review okay so like you know some cases uh, some court cases are being heard it was earlier being heard in the kerala high court but it has come uh, uh, you know come for review in the supreme court of india so we will understand about what are eco sensitive zones we are going to understand about like what are the recent you know happenings uh, that are associated with eco sensitive zones so this topic is important under environment and ecology section of the gs paper 3 for the means exam so with this let us take for discussion the first topic in detail so we will understand about what are electoral bonds okay so this article says will electoral bonds reveal the source of funds it was asked by the supreme court of india okay so let us understand what are electoral bonds okay what are electoral bonds okay basically electoral bonds are some kind of you know uh, some kind of paper these are i mean like uh, like issued by these are issued by banks okay electoral bonds are basically like you know these are issued by banks and and these are purchased by those people who want to make donation to the political parties okay these are similar to some kind of promissory notes okay the electoral bonds are non-interest bearing instruments okay they are non-interest bearing instrument okay non-interest uh, non, uh, bearing instrument means for example if someone has electoral bond of you know some value the value of like that is mentioned on the electoral bond will remain the same its value will not go up will not go down so these are non interest bearing instruments and at the same time uh, like those people who want to donate to a particular political party they have to purchase electoral bond in the denominations of denomination of 1000 10000 1 lakh 10 lakh okay or 1 CR, 1 crore, okay, electoral bonds are, you know, can be purchased in the denomination of 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh, 10 lakh and 1 crore, right, so why do people want to donate to political parties, because like, you know, some political parties have some growth prospects, they have their own agenda, they have some kind of ideology that like people, the citizens of India may want to support. So for that purpose, they want to donate to the political party. So one of the way of donation is through electoral bonds. Okay, one of the way of donation is through electoral bonds. So people can purchase electoral bonds from the State Bank of India. And then uh, like, you know, while purchasing, they will mention the name of the political party to which they, they want to donate. And the thing is like, you know, there are some eligibility associated with the political parties. Because like when the electoral bonds were issued, you know, by the government for the first time, at that point of time, some criteria have been enlisted. And under those criteria, it is mentioned that those political parties who secure a specific, you know, percentage of vote in general election, right? Only, you know, those electoral parties will be able to receive, uh, you know, donation or funds through the electoral bond. And the thing is like, these are uh, like uh, the rules 
I mean rules and like criteria are mentioned right in relation with the representation of people's act 1951 all right so this is the thing so we have understood that uh, electoral bonds are some kind of paper i mean like it's it's maybe a kind of check you you may consider it's photo you can download i mean like you know search in the internet you will come across a paper that is known as electoral bond okay so electoral bond has mention of how much amount is being donated but the name of the donee means someone who is donating will not be you know mentioned in the electoral bond and for purchasing an electoral bond a person cannot make payment through cash they have to make the payment to the state bank of india through bank transfer only through account okay the payment has to be done through account and government of uh, india has allowed only the state bank of india to issue electoral bonds okay so people can purchase electoral bonds from the state bank of india only designated branches of the state bank of india and electoral bonds are like you know they are issued for a specific uh, period you know when elections are there by the political parties and during those period only it can be purchased and after then like you know uh, the political parties must utilize these funds like you know must uh, like get the electoral bonds i mean like converted into rupee format within a specific time period so the time limitation is also associated so we have understood what are electoral bonds right we have understood the various characteristics associated with electoral bonds now the question arises like is electoral bond uh, like issuing electoral bond transparent is it not bypassing the free and fair uh, you know electoral process that is you know in existence in india if we talk about the election commission of india the one of the mandate of the election commission of india is to conduct free and fair election across the country but when it comes to conducting the election it does so but like what happens like when political parties are receiving huge fund right through electoral bonds where i mean like it is not you know made in public like who has donated how much money to the political parties okay because name of the don uh, people who are donating are not mentioned in the electoral bonds so a case came up uh, like you know in the supreme court of india and uh, supreme court of india judges okay the judge uh, judges of the supreme court of india has asked the central government whether the electoral bond system reveal the source of money pumped in the uh, into the fund political parties okay into fund political parties and center says the central government says that this particular scheme scheme means the electoral bond scheme is absolutely transparent in nature okay so at this point of time the central government has maintained a position that like electoral bonds are uh, you know fair it is a transparent system there is nothing that is being hidden okay but the thing is like people at large or uh, you know like those parties who are receiving lesser funds or who are not receiving funds they have this particular thing in mind like they have the objection that, that electoral bonds are somehow you know uh, like you know acting as a roadblock for free and fair election okay so it is acting as a roadblock it's it's not you know enabling the thing it is actually you know hampering the uh, process of free and fair election in india so that's why the cases are being heard in the supreme court of india and uh, the lawyers like you know who have petitioned in the supreme court of india against the electoral bonds include kapil sibal and it it also includes Prash prashant bhushan okay so prashant bhushan has also talked about that people have written rti applications to the government for revealing the source of fund for the uh, electoral bonds but like you know uh, like majority of those applications have not been answered citing that like you know there are uh, less number of personals who are working in in various rti departments okay right to information departments so a lot of things are happening at this point of time we need to wait and watch uh, like how the supreme court of india is going to get, give judgment okay so like we are uh, we need to see like you know how the things turn up whether supreme court of india asks the central government to be more transparent whether in future you know there are some changes you know some changes happen in the electoral bond scheme right 
so we need to wait and watch but the thing is at this point of time this particular issue related to electoral bond is sub judis sub judis means it is under the purview of the supreme court of india it is you know in judicial courts and it is being heard i mean like you know uh, like this particular matter is taken up by the court of law okay so mr sibbal kapil sibbal said that the court should consider the cardinal issue of the impact of electoral bonds on article 324 of the constitution of india article 324 of the constitution of india talks about free and fair elections right and he says that free and fair elections are central to a democracy it is the basic structure now an opaque way of funding political parties where you do not even know who is funding whom destroys the very concept of article 324 this is a matter for a larger bench okay kapil sibbal has asked that this particular matter is is a matter of importance and it should be heard by a larger bench of the supreme court of india okay so as of now the judge has said like you know we are waiting for the central government to i mean like you know uh, like to adhere to the guidelines of the supreme court of india they are waiting for the central government to you know share more information only after then after you know ch uh, checking the fact right can the uh, like you know will the uh, chief justice of india me take okay the chief justice of india me take a a uh, meeting a call to appoint a larger bench to hear this particular matter okay uh, so mr bhushan mr prashant bhushan has also flagged three important issues highlight um, highlighted in the petitions he said besides the questions of okay besides the questions of validity of electoral bonds separate petitions have been questioned whether or not political parties came under the ambit of the rti act he said the third issue was the challenge of the retrospective amendments made to the fcra fcra stands for foreign contribution regulation act this is an act right that regulates how much contribution can a uh, you know non governmental entity ngo or civil society entity can receive as donations okay can receive as donations so donation means contribution from the foreign side okay so foreign contribution regulation act actually regulates how much money can flow right from foreign sources to india for you know various purposes right for various uh, non governmental purposes and uh, purposes for the ngo okay so this is the thing we need to wait like you know how this case turns out to be in the near future but we have understood what are electoral bonds with this we will take another topic for discussion so now let us understand about uh, placebo it says no time for placebo India has to work harder on its image of having an independent drug regulator. So in this article the author wants to say that like we need to strengthen the image of the you know drug regulator in India. We need to strengthen the image of that like uh, the drug regulator is independent in India. So recently what has happened the Central Drugs Standards Control Organization okay in short it is known as cdsco central drugs standard control organization this particular organization has barred it has you know put a stop it has put halt on a particular pharmaceutical company what is the name of the pharmaceutical company this pharmaceutical company was based in haryana and its name is maiden pharmaceuticals limited okay and so this particular organization which is central drugs standard control organization has put ban okay has barred the maiden pharmaceutical limited from manufacturing medicinal drugs okay why did the central agency why did the you know topmost regulator of drugs okay topmost regulator has barred this particular organization because recently the world health organization has highlighted okay the world health organization has highlighted that the 66 children who have died in gambia okay gambia is one of the country in in african continent in africa okay in africa 66 children has died recently and they died after consuming cold and cough syrup after consuming cold and cough syrup the cold and cough syrup was manufactured by this particular company maiden pharmaceutical limited okay so world health organization has 
highlighted that that this particular cold and cough syrup has caused death to 66 children in Gambia. Okay, and how death has happened? Because serious kidney failure has happened. Uh, you know, in those children who have consumed the cold and cough syrup, right? And these cold and cough syrup, okay, have some kind of you know concoctions and these concoctions included diethylene glycol okay so the components in the cough and cold syrup includes diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol and it may have caused acute kidney failure okay it may have, have caused acute kidney failure and because of the acute kidney failure you know these many children have died okay so but the thing is the Indian government has said that a full report from WHO establishing a clear causal link is awaited. Okay, as of now WHO has not released a full fledged report on this particular topic. The World Health Organization has only marked out, it has only, uh, you know, it has only notified or it has only told that like, you know, uh, these many children in Gambia may have died because of, you know, uh, because of consuming the cold and cough syrup that had diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol as its con uh, as its you know uh, component this is the thing so the provisions of the india's drug and cosmetics act in theory came down heavily on manufacturers for making adulterated drugs and on gross violations of prescribed manufacturing practices with imp imprisonment up to 10 years and fines up to 10 lakh so when we talk about the Indian India's Drug and Cosmetics Act, this India's Drug and uh, Drugs and Cosmetics Act is an act that punishes those drug manufacturers who use adulteration while, like who you who I mean like you know who use I mean like those products like you know uh, who adulterate the product like who use I mean like you know. Uh, the uh, foreign materials into the drug foreign means like those materials that are actually not having therapeutic impact so these are substandard products that are added to reduce the cost of manufacturing okay so that they can make profit so the thing is this particular act india uh, like indian drugs and cosmetic act punishes those drugs manufacturers with an improve imprisonment of up to 10 years and fine up to 10 lakh okay these provisions have been rarely executed despite multiple instances of DEG poisoning in India. DEG stands for diethylene glycol. Okay, so we have had multiple instances of you know diethylene glycol poisoning in kids, in people who consume the cold and cough syrup. Okay, so many people have died in India, but like these provisions, like of imprisonment and fine have rarely been imposed okay it has rarely been imposed in 2020 cup syrup made by himachal pradesh based digital vision okay so digital vision is name of a company it was based in himachal pradesh and like they have you know made cup um, cup syrup and it has killed 13 children in jammu and uh, jammu and himachal pradesh and, and test showed the presence of deg okay test was conducted later on so it has showed the presence of DEG. Now let us understand little more on this topic. Okay. So now they are talking about like what has happened with digital vision. So like that's uh, that is one of the case studies in India. Case studies means this particular company has made substandard drugs, uh, substandard cold and cough syrup that was consumed by Indian people and they died. Okay. And it had presence of diethylene glycol, which is in short known as DEG. Okay. Given that the deaths in the Gambia have evoked an international outcry, it was it was highlighted by WHO and India has a reputation as a major global supplier of drugs and vaccines. Okay. So India is a global major supplier of drugs and vaccines. And during COVID-19 timing also, during COVID-19, what has happened? During COVID-19, the government of India has like, you know, exported huge quantities of like, you know, vaccines to foreign countries, right? It has not only supplied vaccines, right, uh, at price, but like it has also supplied vaccines free of cost as a gesture of goodwill to save the life of people, you know, across the border, 
okay so th that has happened so in now here the author is saying in any case this is uh, this is disingenuous as median pharmaceuticals whose products were banned in kerala earlier and flagged for substandard quantity in tamil nadu has marketed the same formulation under different names and there is no reason to assume that their domestic wares undergo a higher standard of production so now the thing is like this particular company maiden pharmaceuticals i mean like maiden pharmaceuticals is a company that has been banned by the apex by the top level i mean like you know drug regulator okay cdsco like we have talked about its name central drugs uh, you know standards like control organization like that so it has banned this particular company but this is not the first instance that like we got to know that this company was ma making substandard drugs even in the state of kerala and tamil nadu they have found that this uh, this particular company was making substandard drugs and they have banned the product of this particular company in their states but the thing is like you know still this company uh, like kept continuing manufacturing the drugs and they have uh, you know sold those drugs under different names in uh, like across the border they have uh, sold the drug to gambia and that has led to killing of 66 children there okay in the global market of pharmaceuticals the pandemic uh, like burnished the credential of india's vaccine manufacturing as vital to ensuring that the whole world access medicine equitably okay so india has played a very important role india has supplied huge quantities of you know covid-19 vaccines uh, like to the world uh, you know across borders right at the time of urgency at the time of need when like people were fearing death like everyone around the world were fearing death why because of covid-19 so covid-19 was a pandemic it has created havoc right uh, like in the minds of people like you know people were fearful but that time like government of india has showcased its strength that like it is one of the biggest manufacturers of uh, vaccines and like it is in a position not only i mean like you know for supplying vaccines to its own citizens but like we have supplied you know vaccines to many other countries like uae then afghanistan then like many other countries and like even to sri lanka and we have maldives like you know in maldives also we have you know supplied huge quantities of covid-19 vaccine so with this like we will take another topic so i hope you have understood uh, no time for placebo placebo was a medicine that was actually not a medicine it was a fake medicine okay so like you know so that said no time for placebo with this like we will take another topic it, it uh, it's smash hit okay nasa's dart gives hope that science can ward off extraterrestrial threat okay now here we need to understand two three simple concepts okay number one the number one thing that we are going to talk about is nasa nasa stands for national aeronautics and space administration full form of nasa national aeronautics and space administration this is the this is the i mean like you know space agency of the united states of america nasa is the space agency of the united states of america in india the space agency is indian space research organization it is known as isro okay in india it is known as isro so now nasa is one of the largest largest i mean like space agencies of the world so recently what has happened right what has happened a terrestrial object okay terrestrial object it is known as asteroid okay basically an asteroid not only one in fact two asteroids okay two asteroids were coming towards the earth now let us understand what are asteroids right asteroid is a simple concept so asteroid are you know planetary bodies these bodies were created i mean these bodies uh, like you know orbit around the sun okay asteroids are objects these these are made of minerals these are made of rocks right they are objects right they are objects like uh, of, uh, in the universe they uh, orbit around the sun and these are also considered to be planetary bodies they are similar their structures are similar i mean like you know two planets okay their structures are similar to planets but asteroids are very small in size okay 
their size ranges from 100 meter okay 100 meter to 1000 kilometer radius the radius of these objects okay these objects let's say this is asteroid a radius of these objects ranges from 100 meter to 1000 kilometer okay they orbit around the sun but the thing is sometimes these asteroids go in i mean like you know uh, go in certain direction when they you know lose their orbit so sometimes they uh, they hit they impact some planets so india is at the verge of you know getting impacted by one of the asteroid okay india is at the verge at this point of time but what nasa has done right nasa has a you know has a uh, technology which is known as dart d a r t dart stands for double asteroid dart stands for double asteroid redirection test okay so nasa has conducted this particular test on an asteroid which was 160 meter wide asteroid 160 meter diameter okay its diameter is less okay 160 meter uh, like wide asteroid its name is dimorphos so dimorphos is the name of an asteroid right on which this particular test uh, like you know uh, a small spacecraft okay it, its name is dart uh, double asteroid redirection test okay a small uh, so they have used nasa have used this dart okay a small spacecraft to change the direction in which you know uh, uh, this particular dimorphos asteroid was moving okay why because like if we change the direction it will go somewhere else okay it will not hit earth okay so that has been done so now this particular spacecraft of nasa gives us a hope uh, like gives a hope to the earth to the people of the earth right what hope that scientific advancements can ward off can do away with extraterrestrial threats the threats that are originating okay outside the earth outside the planet earth okay so we are able to do away with we are able to avoid any kind of extra extraterrestrial threat okay uh, the extraterrestrial threat because of you know uh, because of asteroids so this is the thing now you can read about you know uh, this dart so uh, this is basically a small spacecraft okay so nasa has done a study okay so after studying two bodies for nearly 10 days nasa announced that the course of the smaller asteroid has been indeed been altered a little initially the orbit of dimorphos are around uh, like dd most took 11 hours and 55 minutes after the impact 32 minute alteration in its orbital period has taken place it is now 11 hours and 23 minutes only okay so th like uh, they have impacted the dimorphos with this particular spacecraft and like it has led to alteration in the uh, you know rotation alteration in the like orbital motion of this particular uh, this particular asteroid and that has you know led to uh, like evading or avoiding any kind of you know threat that is uh, uh, that was arising because of the extraterrestrial because of the extraterrestrial asteroid the asteroid comes up uh, you know from the uh, from our galaxy okay it, it comes from our solar system now the us is not alone in attempting this okay even china has a plan to deflect a 40 meter wide earth crossing asteroid named 2020 pn1 okay so there there was an asteroid uh, that is uh, you know that is going to cross earth like you know after 2026 and before that china has made a plan that like it wants to deflect this particular asteroid which is named as 2020 pn1 okay so after this like so now we have understood the importance of you know dart or such a spacecraft that may alter the orbit of you know uh, orbit of this uh, asteroids apart from this like you know uh, like earth has a history of getting impacted by asteroids in the past okay so if we talk about this thing the uh, chick chick zucks uh, chick zucks club crater okay so there's a crater this crater is a reminder of the impact of 10 kilometer wide large asteroid 
that fell on earth 66 million years ago okay about 66 million years ago a large i mean like you know 10 kilometer wide asteroid had impacted the earth and that impact had wiped out nearly 75 percent of plant and animal life from the earth okay so the impact the collision has huge impact on the life and livelihoods of people animal and plants okay so now recently i mean like you know there was a fiction film fiction movie that was recently released its name is don't look up this particular fiction film or movie deals with you know asteroid asteroidal impact the same theme it, it looks into okay so this is all for this topic with this let us take another topic for discussion now this topic is related to global hunger index okay we are going to discuss about what is global hunger index right so it says global hunger index is out india is in serious category at rank 107 okay so global hunger index we need to understand the name of the organization that releases the global hunger index at this point of time i am not going to reveal the name okay at the last in the last like you know while we discuss uh, like after we discuss all the topics i have a question for you that uh, talks about global hunger index and the organization that releases it that time i am going to reveal the name of this particular uh, like you know uh, the the organizations that release the global hunger index now as of now let us talk about the report the index that was recently released okay so global hunger index right this particular index is basically it is a tool for comprehensively measuring and tracking hunger at global regional and national levels okay so global hunger index scores are based on the values of four component indicators what are those four component indicators it is very important right number one undernourishment number two child stunting number three child wasting and number four child mortality now let us understand what is undernourishment undernourishment means when child you know gets food which is very less than his bodily requirement okay so every one of us needs energy to sustain to do our daily activity we get those energy by consuming food right if children are getting lesser food than they actually require so they are undernourished okay so undernourishment is one of the component for calculating global hunger index apart from this second component is child stunting what is what is child stunting when we talk about child stunting child stunting means as compared to the age of a child his height is not you know uh, not matching i mean for example let's say like you know every country has uh, some kind of height standards for example like you know there are some countries where people are generally tall there are some countries where people are you know generally uh, shorter it depends on the topography various factors are there but the thing is like in those countries in every country in, in, in india also let's say there is a child of the age of let's say 19 years so it is expected that he will have an average uh, height but like if height is very low as compared to the average height so what it means that like you know the child is stunted means like like he has not grown you know bodily like he, uh, his height is not as per his age right according to his age so that is known as child stunting apart from this there is another indicator so child stunting is also a component for measuring global hunger index the third component is known as child wasting okay it is known as child wasting what do we mean by child wasting it simply means a child i mean like when he does not get proper food i mean like you know proper nutrition for its for uh, for his or her growth in that case many children are very thin okay they are very thin i mean like their body will be very thin like that okay very thin and like uh, the moment you look you will feel like you know this uh, child is very thin i mean like you know he might ha not have been getting you know proper nutrition so that is known as child wasting okay then we have child mortality 
child mortality means number of children who are dying you know uh, like uh, as compared to the number of male uh, number of living ch uh, child like that child mortality okay so these are four parameters undernourishment child stunting child wasting and child mortality okay so these are four uh, four uh, you know component indicators that are used for uh, like calculating the global hunger index okay so when we talk about global hunger index uh, the uh, the global hunger index is categorized let's consider like you know they are ranking different countries after ranking those countries they categorize you know those countries into five different type right what are those five uh, different categories they are you know like global hunger index like you know having low moderate serious alarming and extremely alarming what it means means like you know those countries okay where global hunger index i mean the uh, the uh, you know like in a scale ghi score like if the score is zero it means like it is best score no hunger okay and if score is 100 it means it is worst okay huge number of hungry people huge number of i mean like you know children who are who i mean like you know, stay hungry is there so this is the thing now if we talk about ranking of india in this particular index ranking of india in the global hunger index so how india is ranked here in this table you can see name of i mean like a you know, name of various african countries like you know we have rwanda nigeria ethiopia republic of congo sudan you know even these african countries rwanda nigeria ethiopia republic of congo sudan they have performed much better they have performed much better in the global hunger index as compared to india india is ranked you know below them india is ranked below them india has been ranked you know little up little better than like you know war torn afghanistan okay afghanistan you know like there was recently a uh, topple of government in afghanistan earlier afghanistan was ruled by uh, established authority that was backed by the united states of america but that established authority that particular government was toppled by the taliban in afghanistan okay but afghanistan is a war torn region and now you know afghanistan is not performing like in this index you know better than india but like you know many african countries are performing better than india in the global hunger index so this is that uh, you know this is the right time that like we should uh, we should think right we should think more like how we can increase the nutrition level in our children so that like you know we can also like come among the top most countries like you know in this particular ranking right so india's score is 29.1 and it, and it has placed india into serious category india also ranks below sri lanka nepal bangladesh and pakistan okay india's child wasting rate okay is 19.3 and it is worse than the levels recorded in 2014 so india's child wasting rate has increased now apart from this like if we talk about other parameters if we talk about undernourishment remember we have talked about four component undernourishment uh, stunting wasting and child mortality okay child is stunting child wasting child mortality so these were four component we have talked about child wasting wasting means when when the child is very thin right undernourishment means like he is not getting proper nutrition and undernourishment also like we have performed uh, you know very uh, poorly then like india has shown improvement in child stunting okay so child stunting has reduced earlier child stunting was 38.7 percent now child stunting is 35.5 percent so it has reduced from 2014 to 2022 it's, it's been seven years that it has reduced i mean like you know slowly and gradually but in other parameters the uh, performance has gone very bad i mean like it has declined over the time period if we talk about child mortality child mortality also like it has dropped earlier it was high earlier it was 4.6 percent now it is 3.3 percent okay child mortality so india has seen a slight worsening with its ghi score like increasing from 
टू परसेंट इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन टू ट्वेंटी नाइन पॉइंट वन परसेंट इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू ओके सो सो दिस इज द थिंग सो आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड अबाउट ग्लोबल हंगर इंडेक्स वी हैव अंडरस्टूड लाइक यू नो वॉट आर द सब कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ ग्लोबल हंगर इंडेक्स वॉट आर द कैटेगरीज इन विच यू नो कंट्रीज आर रैंक एंड इंडिया इज रैंक एज अ सीरियस सीरियसली इम्पैक्टेड कंट्री बाई हंगर ओके and we, uh, we have not yet talked about the organization that releases the global hunger index so at the end of this slide and the at the end of the discussion i am going to talk about the name of the organization that releases okay uh, global hunger index okay so with this uh, let's take another topic it says india's policies must aid its bright spot forecast okay so what has happened recently the international monetary fund has come up with a report global uh, you know global outlook report so it has come up with a report okay and in that report it has you know given economic outlook for the world for for various countries who are part of the united nations organization system and like it has ranked india in that report you know fairly because like you know Uh, the international monetary fund and other such big bodies see a very imminent recessionary you know uh, pressure means like you know they are forecasting that the world may move towards re uh, recessionary phase okay why because of multiple uh, factors one of the factor is the ongoing russia ukraine war okay ongoing russia ukraine conflict so in that uh, like in the global economic outlook okay the report that was released by the international monetary fund in that report it has mentioned that the world at large uh, like you know will grow at a very slow pace but like it has given fairly good uh, you know good analysis for india so they have forecasted uh, like they have earlier forecasted that india will grow at 6.8% in financial year 2020 uh, 22 23 means like this year it is growing at 6.8% but now it has forecasted that india will grow at 6.1% in financial year 2023 to 24 okay so this is the thing now india has been downgraded but still they see a bright spot bright spot means like across the world the countries are growing at a very slower pace but still india is growing at a 6.1% rate so the i mean like you know director of the Uh, the deputy director okay of the asia and pacific department of the international monetary fund she has seen still a bright spot okay her name is any mary okay so she has seen a bright spot so like there is a lot of room like you know there are lot of things that government of india and india can do to make the country still growing okay they can do multiple things that like india keeps on growing okay so like we should have our fiscal policy which is very much targeted it is time limited okay only then like you know we are going to grow at a at a desired rate okay but it is very important that like we should avoid any kind of impediments okay we should do away with the impediments we should focus on having you know very good fiscal policy and government and the central bank which is the reserve bank of india they should together look forward to i mean stabilize the indian economy uh, you know uh, like from the recessionary pressure that is around the world okay so with this we will take another topic this topic is again important under the indian economy section this is important for the gs paper 3 of the mains exam and we will talk about in this topic we will talk about repo rate okay it says risky to lift repo rate above neutral when growth fragile okay so now what is what is repo rate okay basically repo rate is the interest rate that the reserve bank of india charges from the commercial bank when commercial bank takes money or borrows money from the reserve bank of india okay simple repo rate is the rate of interest that the reserve bank of india charges from the commercial banks okay uh, commercial banks or any other party to whom the government of uh, to whom the reserve bank of india lends money gives money in loan right so this is the interest rate so here this particular person i mean jayant verma 
he is a member of the monetary policy committee now let us understand what is monetary policy committee monetary policy committee is a committee within the reserve bank of india that looks into the monetary policy matters reserve bank of india comes up with bi monthly monetary policy it means like every two months this particular body sits they see like you know how the economy is performing so accordingly if they feel that like there is a need to tweak there is a need to change right there is a need to modify you know some uh, monetary policy instruments then they do so one of the monetary policy instrument is repo rate then we have reverse repo rate then we have a statutory liquidity ratio which is known as slr okay then we have you know cash reserve ratio which is known as crr so there are multiple monetary policy tools with the reserve bank of india apart from this there are qualitative tools these are quantitative uh, tools what are quantitative tools repo rate reverse repo rate uh, cash reserve ratio statutory liquidity ratio which is also known as slr okay repo rate reverse repo rate okay statutory liquidity ratio and crr these are components i mean like you know these are monetary policy instruments that are varied when the monetary policy committee thinks that this is the right time you know uh, to stabilize indian economy or like you know to bring down the inflation to i mean do away with the deflationary pressures and all okay so there are multiple things that keep on happening sometimes you may have noticed that like you know there is huge inflation everybody talks about that the prices of goods and services are in general increasing it means like you know inflation is there so when huge inflation comes when the inflation goes you know beyond a targeted level in that case the monetary policy committee i mean like you know comes up with some kind of tweak in monetary policy instruments okay so this is what i mean like you know this particular person mr jayant verma who is a member of the monetary policy committee he had suggested the reserve bank of india that like you know reserve bank of india should raise it should increase the uh, you know policy repo rate to 6% okay it should increase the policy repo rate i mean repo rate to 6% earlier the reserve bank of india has thought that like we will increase the repo rate by 5 uh, to make it 5.9% okay but the thing is he suggests that like it should be increased at 6% and then like you know the uh, monetary policy committee should sit idle for some time because like you know these changes does not you know come into the real economy directly okay so it it takes time for the banking channels to actually translate these changes in the monetary policy to the actual economy all right when the decisions are taken by the reserve bank of india the benefits or you know burden is directly translated to the banks but like you know when i mean repo rate is increased uh, let's say okay so what has what happens the banks i mean take time to to transfer this particular thing uh, to the uh, citizens at large you know to the uh, businesses citizens like whosoever borrow or lend money to the banks okay like that so now why he has suggested that after increasing we should pause for some time we should pause for some time so that like it takes effect in the real economy right and it takes time for this particular thing okay so how much time it may take it may take up to 3 to 4 quarters for the repo rate to be transmitted to the real economy and the peak effect may take as long as 5 to 6 quarters one quarter is equi uh, equivalent to 3 months okay when we talk about 3 to 4 quarters we are talking about 9 to 12 months okay 9 to 12 months when we talk about 5 to 6 quarters 5 into 3 15 to 18 months we are talking about 15 to 18 months okay so this is the time period in general that takes i mean like for transmitting any uh, you know uh, like any uh, policy rate changes to actually uh, hit the real economy right If, uh, so so this is the thing now he has suggested that like you know government of india should not increase the repo rate to a very high level and and the thing is like it should wait for some time because like you know there is imminent recessionary pressure because like you know growth prospects are fragile because international bodies like international monetary fund they have already forecasted 
that our near term uh, recessionary pressure will be there because of multiple factors including the ongoing Russia Ukraine conflict okay so with this uh, let us take another topic I hope you understood what is repo rate I hope you understood what is monetary policy committee you have understood like what are different policy instruments right that are varied by the monetary policy committee to stabilize the Indian economy okay to bring the Indian economy uh, to the growth trajectory right so with this uh, let us take another topic this topic is related to eco sensitive zone okay it is related to eco sensitive zone it says top court may take up Kerala's review <clears throat> Supreme Court may also consider centers plea seeking clarification on courts judgment to have one kilometer eco sensitive zone ringing pro uh, protected forest national parks and wildlife sanctuaries okay so now let us understand okay so there are multiple areas that are of ecological importance these areas are being protected by the government it is being protected by the state government by the central government at different places in india so these places that are protected they are known as protected areas okay these areas include forests okay these areas include forests then it includes national parks plus it includes wildlife sanctuaries okay wls wildlife sanctuaries so these are protected areas now what has happened kerala i mean kerala is located in the western region this is located in the western ghats region so western ghat region is considered to be an ecologically important area because it has huge amount of biodiversity over there but at the same time it also faces huge you know huge threat right? it faces a, a huge uh, amount of threat uh, you know for the on uh, because of ongoing developmental activity ongoing construction activity and like you know uh, like um, uh, deforestation etc so it is the right time that like people should protect the ecological uh, integrity of the place so the thing is like you know people have uh, uh, you know approached various ministries in kerala they have approached the kerala high court also to set up right to set up uh, an area around these places an area okay around the forest around the national park around the wildlife sanctuary where no construction activity will be allowed okay where no construction activity will be allowed where no industrial activity will be allowed why because they want to protect these regions okay so like they want to demarcate okay one kilometer radius okay let's uh, let's say uh, you know let's say uh, let's say this is the this is a national park across national park let's say this is the national park in one kilometer radius okay across national park so they want to make uh, declare it to be eco sensitive zone so that like you know no such kind of activity happens that hampers the ecology of that particular region okay so this is the plea this is the request from the environmentalist and like you know it has been reviewed by the kerala high court okay the kerala government has reviewed it and the central government has also reviewed it and like you know a, a petition has reached the supreme court of india now supreme court of india has to give a judgment on it now uh, like you know the supreme court of india has indicated right uh, like on friday it means like it has indicated yesterday that the supreme court of india may consider taking up kerala's review of the supreme court's judgment to have a one kilometer eco sensitive zone ringing protected forests national parks and wildlife sanctuaries across the country along with the plea for clarification sought by the center okay so supreme court has sought from the center to to give its review okay give its review means like supreme court wants to impose one kilometer of eco sensitive zone across you know important ecological places like national parks wildlife sanctuaries like kerala go government has already given its review like they are ready for it but the thing is like central government many other uh, you know state government may have to come uh, come up with this okay so as of now the supreme court of india has uh, given i mean like you know uh, indicated that it may consider taking up kerala's review on the supreme court's ju judgment okay supreme court has 
already given judgment so Kerala has reviewed it it has you know put forward its view now Supreme Court may consider you know this particular uh, like review of the Kerala government now uh, they have also sought the Supreme Court has sought clarification from the central government also once the clarification comes they may I mean like you know consider it for I mean like going ahead with this so the center has sought a clarification on certain paragraph in the court's verdict including the fate of building activities predating the judgment now let us understand what has happened let's say today this uh, the supreme court of india has given a judgment that like you know this is the national park and like there will be one kilometer uh, radius across the national park where no construction activity will be allowed so the judgment was re given recently but it may happen like it may be the case that like some construction activity has already happened in that area that construction activity has happened predating means like before the judgment was given so now what will be the fate what is going to happen with those developments okay so the uh, the review that was done by kerala it has argued that the judgment would not lead to massive uh, like would lead to massive displacement of people living in the vicinity of forest areas okay so like kerala government has said like this particular judgment would lead to i mean you know like uh, people uh, like you know being displaced from their houses okay and uh, for those places who live nearby the forest areas and human habitations are within one kilometer of protected areas there are many places that's the thing so now in june the supreme court in its judgment referred to the environment ministry guidelines highlighting that eco sensitive zones around national parks forests and sanctuaries would function as a shock absorber for the protected areas these zones would act as transition zone from areas of high protection to those involving lesser protection the court had noted how the national resources were ravaged by mining and other activities okay so in the june month right it's october now in the june month the court has already given judgment in that judgment the court has uh, mentioned okay it has highlighted that like you know we should uh, like we should build uh, eco sensitive zones like you know for one kilometer across you know these places like national parks forest and sanctuaries and the uh, and this eco uh, this eco sensitive zone would function as a shock absorber shock absorber means there is a core area that needs to be protected like if we do not have any shock absorber you know that kind of area so directly the the core area will get affected okay so that's why they want to create eco sensitive zones so i hope you have understood uh, like you know you have understood uh, all the topics that we have discussed today now with this let us take this question for for uh, for you know for today's pra practice so here this question is for prelims generally sometimes upsc asks some questions like this these are very simple questions provided that you have studied it if you have not studied it it will be difficult for you to answer so let's take this question for discussion it says the global hunger index the global hunger index is released by which of the following organizations which of these organizations release the global hunger index is it unesco no is it the world economic forum no is it the international monetary fund no this is released by the concern worldwide and wealth hunger life okay these are the two organizations they together they jointly release the global hunger index okay the global hunger index is released by these two organizations concern worldwide and wealth hunger life these two organizations together release the global hunger index okay so this is the thing that i wanted to, i wanted to discuss at last okay of today's discussion thank you so much everyone for attending today's session i hope it was a good session and i hope you have a great day ahead thank you the first step towards achieving your dreams is having the right coach get the best education with lokman ias and make your upsc dreams come true download the app now